Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 334 for the 27th of Tishrei in a leap year. So as you may have noticed, there are many recurring themes that come up in the Tanya, one of which is God's speech. So we've been discussing God's speech lately. We spoke about it yesterday, and we've spoken about it earlier in the Tanya as well. This idea that God speaks the world into creation, and that when, you know, you look at the story of creation in the Bible, which actually is this week's Parsha. Um, this is the Shabbos episode of this week. So hopefully you're listening to it before Shabbos, or if it, if you're listening to it after Shabbos, then it was the previous week's Parsha, but technically it's this week's Parsha is the whole story of the creation of the world. And we see that the whole creation of the world occurred through a process of 10 sayings that we've been talking about. And we've also learned another recurring theme that comes up in the Tanya is that God is not a person, right? And when we use these anthropomorphisms for God, it's one way of understanding it, like on a kind of basic level, is that it gives us something, that, a way that we can understand God on our terms, right? Because it's like we have certain body parts, certain actions and things like that. So when we attribute those to God, it makes God a little bit more comprehensible to us. But we've also learned that, in fact, a deeper way of looking at this is that, in fact, we are the allegory. We are the imperfect image mirror to God, who is the ultimate archetype of all of these things. So when we talk about speech, when we talk about hearing, when we talk about seeing all of these things, our experience of these things down here is actually an imperfect expression of God above. And that actually, when we think about our senses and our actions down here, we can look at these things and they can actually help us understand God because it can give us a semblance of how God operates, but obviously in a very uh, deeper kind of more archetypical kind of way. So again, going back to speech. So speech is a really big theme because um, as we've mentioned, speech is the way that God creates the world. And not only, and I say creates, not created, because not only did God create the world back then, back in the day, through the 10 utterances of creation, but actually this is something that's perpetual, as we spoke about yesterday. It's something that happens all the time, that the entire world is being substantiated by God's speech, something from nothing at all moments. And just to give the bigger, bigger context, the broader context of why we're talking about this right now is we're in the middle of a certain epistle, Epistle 25, where the Alter Rebbe is discussing a certain teaching of the Baal Shem Tov that relates to this broader concept of this idea that everything contains uh, God's vitality and is actually being sustained something for nothing at all times by the word of God and that nothing exists other than the word of God. Nothing has its own in intrinsic existence to it. And we started off this discussion with, interestingly, the uh, discussion on anger management and how like when we keep this in mind, when we really understand how there is nothing but God and that how nothing has its own power, its own vitality of its own, then to get angry at somebody because of something that they did to you that you perceive as a wrongdoing or as an insult to you or whatever is silly. And not only is it silly, it's actually akin to idol worship because you're basically saying that this person has power that they don't actually have because the only thing that has power is God and God is actually giving them the power and vitalizing them. And that we spoke about that if somebody is uh, doing something to you that that triggers a sense of anger in you, that that thing that's being done to you is that's God's will that that thing be done to you. Sure, people have free will, so it didn't necessarily have to be that person and people are held liable for that ac their actions, but that's not our business. Our business is to experience our lives and to encounter life at, at face value and to understand that everything that happens to us is an, is an expression of God willing the world into existence, speaking the world into existence and 
all the elements of the world something from nothing at all times. So that brings us to today. So today we're going to talk more about this speech, this this uh, this uh, faculty of speech that we say that God has and what it is exactly, because we know that it's not human speech, right? It's definitely something very different than that. Um, but yet we do call it speech because it does have something kind of in common, so to speak, <laughs> interesting play on words, um, with our speech, which is that when we speak, it's a way of expressing ourselves. And we'll see that God's speech is also a way of expressing himself, but it manifests in many different ways. And it has different different uh, names to it as well. So let's get straight into the text and see how the altar of it explains this and goes through the different names and different uh, different aspects, different ways that this speech manifests. So the altar of it begins and he says that it's known to the students of Kabbalah that the Dvar Hashem, meaning the speech of God, is referred to by the sages, meaning like the sages of the Talmud and the Midrash, as the Shekhinah. So the Shekhinah, you might have heard this word before. The Shekhinah is the feminine name of God. As far as I know, it's the only of all of God's names. It's the only one that is feminine in nature. It literally means indwelling. And so the altar Rabbah is saying that uh, uh, that the um, that whenever the that according to Kabbalah, whenever the sages refer to the Shekhinah, they make reference to the Shekhinah. They're basically talking about the speech of God, the Dvar Hashem. And then he says that in uh, in in the name and the way that Zohar calls the calls the Dvar Hashem calls the speech of God. The terms that the Zohar uses is Imatata, lower mother, and Matranuta, which means queen. So again, these are all feminine terms. So there's something feminine about these aspects. And especially, says the Altar at the beginning of Parshas Vayera, where we see that there's an analogy about uh, um, to God's speech as being re referenced and, and visualized as a princess. So why is it that God's speech is referenced in this way? Why is it called Shechina, this indwelling? And so the Altar Rabbi says it's because the speech of God dwells within all of the creatures in order to vivify them. And in the language of the the Mekubalim, the Kabbalists, it's called Malchus. So here's another term for uh, for the Dvar Hashem, for the speech of God, which is very essential, is Malchus. So you may have heard, you know, we've referenced this word Malchus before many times. Malchus is the last of all the spheros. It's the, it's the last one, and it's also the feminine of all the spheros. And it's where they all kind of like come together and become manifest. It literally means sovereignty or kingship. And um, and the ultra rabbi says that this is because he brings a, a citation from Echa chapter eight verse four. Dvar melech shilton, the word of a king rules. So the why is speech associated with kingship? Because we know that the speech of a king is like the, a king's decree. We don't really have kings nowadays in this way, but back in the day, the idea of a king is that when a king made a decree, that became reality. That was like very, very powerful, right? So that king who would, um, the way he ruled over his palace was through his speech. And so then he says there are actually many different um, reasons for this according to Kabbalah. So that's one reason why it's referred to as Malchus is because the speech of a king is like the power of the king and there's other reasons too. And so now the altar says that there are there are different aspects, there are different levels. Um, there's the there's the level of Malchus of Atsilus. So Atsilus, if you remember, is the highest of all worlds. Then there's the aspect of Malchus of Bria, which is the next world down, et cetera. So meaning there are four basic worlds, Atsilus, Bria, Yitzhira, and Sierra. If you need a review of that, I'm not going to do it right now, but you can go back, you can look it up, or you can go back and listen to previous episodes where I went through those four levels. But that's the basic structure. The highest is Atsilus, then Bria, Yetzirah, and the lowest is Asiya. So what is Malchus of Atsilus? We're going to go through them now. So Malchus of Atsilus, that is the speech of God that vivifies and brings into existence the great souls that are in on the level of Atsilus. So there are certain great souls that are on that very high level that are connected to Atsilus that can be like traced back to Atsilus. And so this is where the, the speech of God in, in Atsilus, the, the Malchus of Atsilus, this is what it does. This is what it vivifies. And this is like, for example, he gives an example, like the soul of the first man. Adam Harishan, where it says about him that God, and again, this is in this week's Parsha, in Brashis chapter 2, verse 7, that we see that that God actually blew life into his nostrils. So that original man, the first man that ever lived in the world, he came from that level. It was like this direct thing that God uh, 
brought him into existence through this Malchus Fatsilis. And so too, other souls that were on this very high level was the souls of the four, our forefathers and the souls of prof, our, the prophets and things like that. So these people, the souls of the forefathers or, or the prophets or whatever, they were a chariot really for God and totally nullified to him, to God. So just like Atsilis, if you've been following along the podcast, you know, Atsilis, the whole idea of Atsilis is the world of emanation. Everything is totally nullified to God on that level. As, uh, as our sages taught that, um, and this is from the Zohar, where it says, that it was taught that the Shekhinah spoke from the throat of Moshe, that whenever Moshe spoke, he was on such a high level, he was such a high prophet, uh, that he, at whatever he was speaking, it was just God speaking right through him. And this is true, actually, of all of the prophets and all of those people that had Ruach HaKodesh, that had, that possessed the Holy Spirit, it's translated as, uh, that the, that the, the voice that supernal voice and supernal speech became vested in their speech and in their uh, and in their voice, really, as um, as the Arizal taught. So that's that's the whole idea of prophecy. Is that prophecy was that God's speech was actually directly being transferred through through them. So there was like no um, no uh, hindrance at all. So this is why we can say that that's connected to the Malchus of Atzilus because Atzilus is totally connected to God and doesn't have any obstruction from God. Then we have Malchus of Bria, which Malchus of Bria is the speech of God that vivifies and brings into existence the souls and the angels in the world of Bria, which is not on the same level of Attila. So Attila is like this level of like, there is no obstruction. It's just totally just, you know, nullification to God. And Bria is that one level right below it. And then then finally, he skips Yetzirah for some reason, and then he goes on to Malchus of Asiya, which is Malchus of Asiya is the speech of God that vivifies this world that we live in, up until the very, all the way down to the element of earth and water and everything that's underneath the earth below. So that's the end of the section, and uh, and we'll continue tomorrow um, along these lines, but that in basic summary, today was just like a summary of what how to understand the speech of God and what that means. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.